Super Rugby Friday games, man, the competition benefited from a round like this. You get an extra time match, golden point with Moana Pacifica against the Canes. Then you get the first win for the winless Rebels. And then a one point thriller uh, over in Perth with the Brumbies over the force. I've only just watched that one this morning because it started at midnight here in NZ. But um, yeah, we'll go over some of the key events of the game, some stats and... Um, yeah, you guys can let me know your thoughts on how the games went. First one, Moana Pacifica get their first ever win over the Hurricanes. I'm gutted this one wasn't in front of a bigger crowd because New Zealand's, um, you know, regulations about gatherings are relaxed from today. So yesterday they were limited to the amount of people that could see that historic match. 24-19. Honestly, in the first half, I don't know how they were still in the game. I guess... A lot of tackling if you watch the game Moana Pacifica were just under the pump in that first half and yet somehow the score was still seven points apiece at half time Geordie Barrett got one Henry Stoll has got one I mean yeah I think the halftime stats the Hurricanes had how many run meters was it 278 278 which is pretty solid for one half Moana Pacifica had 33-0 like in the first half, they were just defending. They had a couple of yellow cards. Kip, who got one for a bunch of penalties conceded. Um, there was another guy who got one. It was Almua got one for um, a head-on-head -head tackle, which was mitigated down from a red because of um, like the step and movements of the player. So, yeah, it was a crazy first half. And to be fair, the Canes looked like a team who hadn't played rugby in a couple of weeks. Right, there was a bit of rust there. Turnovers conceded halftime is nine to two. They just kept coughing up the ball they came. So they probably lost the game in that first half. They should have capitalized really, but you've got to give credit to the Moana Pacifica defense. Possession was 21% for Moana Pacifica in that first half, 79 for the Canes, man. They were just all over the place. And they conceded 10 penalties to one Moana Pacifica. So I don't know how that match is. Like statistically, that match shouldn't be seven all at half time. I mean, all you can say is Canes sloppy on attack, but Moana... Great on defense, eh? Second half game opens up a wee bit more. We get some more tries. Uh, Morby gets one for the Canes, but then Omua gets one for Moana Pacifica, and then uh, Fido gets one, the big prop for the Canes, and then Funaki gets one on 77 minutes to tie things up. Mariasi has a yellow card uh, in this one as well. Um, but yeah, there was uh, some pretty great hands in uh, like the Almoa try, but Fido hit one kind of straight back for the Canes. That seemed like the momentum, just as Moana Pacific was kind of coming back into it, the Fido try looked like that was going to be the try that got the Canes, you know, to, to go over. But um, nah, man, that was a crazy finish to the game. So they go to Golden Point um, when it's 19 points apiece. And Moana Pacifica have the first period of pressure, but then they concede a penalty. The Canes go down the other end of the field, and the Canes are just going phase, phase, phase. You're wondering, man, these Moana Pacific guys are going to be tired. And then turnover ball. Tawala just ends up hacking it down the field. Because you don't want to play in your own territory when you're on golden point, right? You want to be safe as possible. And then just show some wheels, some soccer skills to hack it forward. And then he regathers it around his knees, like, phenomenal finish absolutely grandstanding finish as i said i'm gutted more people weren't there to see that one live because what a way to get your first win these guys were given a hiding just a week ago by the chiefs man a much changed Chiefs side so what um like what a turnaround for having two weeks of proper game time can do eh? and admittedly the canes rusty because they've had two weeks of no games but no one can complain about the, uh, the start of the season more than Moana Pacifica because they've had the worst build-up of anyone, right? With them getting the COVID cases first. But um, yeah, 24-19. Historic win. Crazy stuff. Run meters finished 383 to 510 to the Canes. Position and territory evens out a wee bit more. 56 and 51. That's position and territory to the Canes. But remember, the stats were really lopsided at half time, So the Moana Pacific guys kind of had the better of that second half. Um, penalties considered as 18-11, so that evens out a wee bit as well. I remember because first half it was 10-1, to 1, so second half is a lot more even. Stowers, man, 46 run meters, 15 from 15 tackles. That dude put in a huge shift. 
Uh, Levi Almoa for Moana Pacifica, 75 run meters, a clean break, beats two defenders. Yeah, man. Uh, some proper good stats from these guys. I mean, Blake Gibson makes 18 out of 18 tackles. Pete Umaga Jensen has a couple of try assists. But, um, yeah, historic win from Moana Pacifica. I don't know how many other times I can say it, but it was great stuff, man. They are now 1-2, and two, uh, so still down the wrong end of the table, but first win. Really, really pleasing. I wasn't sure they were going to get a first win for a while. The, the Moana Pacific was supposed to get a hiding in this one. Um, they played the Blues next on Tuesday. Quick turnaround because they've got to catch up on some fixtures. So it's a Tuesday game for them. And uh, the Hurricanes will play the Chiefs. Uh, they are 2-2 two and two now, the Canes. So a 50-50 record. There you go. Uh, the next one, the Rebels get their first win over the... Well, first win anywhere, but first win over the Drua ever. Uh, 42 points to 27 at home. <clears throat> the Rebels needed that win. If they lost here, I think their season was pretty much a write-off. But based on what we saw from their loss against the Tars last week, I think there were some encouraging signs that they were coming right. And uh, I think they kind of showed us a bit more what they can do. But that being said... The Drua hands, especially that first half, were just like, they must have had grease on the ball or something because they were just kept dropping everything. It was pretty painful for them. When they finally got some continuity, like bang, bang, bang in that second half, they actually made a game of it. But yeah, they'll, they'll look back with that first half uh, with a bit of pain, to be honest. I mean, they get one through Matt Phillip. Uwilesi gets one. Matt Phillip does really well to reach out. And uh, the Rebels guys did pretty well to keep the ball alive. They get a maul try that ULS says. So it's good stuff from the uh, from the Rebels. The um, the Drua do manage to get a couple of penalties. So halftime, it's like, what, 21-6? So, yeah, it's um, it's not been the best first half from the Drua. They probably did well to get those six points because they're knock-ons, man, like 6-1. to one. Yeah, and they... They, uh, yeah, they just couldn't get any continuity. Eh? Defenders beaten though, 16-9 at half time. Like, they are a dangerous team, even when they keep knocking the bloody ball on. Um, second half, I mean, you could notice, by the way, it's a, a game in Melbourne, but there's a lot of Fijians in that crowd, eh? A lot. They had a lot of away support. Like, sometimes Timur was lined up a shot at goal. You would have thought he was in Fiji, based on, um, you know, the heckling and what he was getting. Seemed like a bit of a home atmosphere at time for the Drua guys, but um, it's good to see the crowd support. Um, the Rebels were really lethal, man. Nuu got one from a nice line-out move, some pretty soft tackling. Um, their scrum was winning penalties. Hodge did get a yellow card for some cynical play on their own goal line, and that's kind of what sparked the Drua to get their first try through Salawa. But then they got one through Elof back, the um, the Rebels guys, and then two more to the, the Drua, Ikanaveri and uh, Revolvo. So, like I mentioned, when they finally look slick, I mean, some of it's like coast to coast, right? Um, yeah, it's an 80 meter try, that third one. It's proper excitement. She's like, if you want a team as a neutral or a new Super Rugby fan to follow, you could certainly do worse than the Drua, man. They are a really, really fun team to watch. Um, they scored like a bunch of points in that yellow card. So, yeah, um, the Rebels guys got one through all, so their props got some tries right at the death. Tamua ran the clock right down. I think he'd had enough. He got smashed by, I think it was Nagusa, in a big tackle in this game. So he was probably ready to go into the sheds. The crowd gave him a wee bit of a boo for wasting that whole minute. But anyway, um, yeah, man, the Rebels, they get it done. And like I said, the Drua guys, I think, will look back at that first half with a bit of frustration. But for the Rebels... Yeah, some, some encouraging signs last week actually kind of came to fruition this week, which is really pleasing because they've got players that are better than their results were showing. So, yeah, run meters finished 316 to 674. The Drua love to run it. Kicks from hand 18-6. That like, 18 is kind of low from the Rebels, but six kicks from hand for the Drua is phenomenally low. You never see a team only kick six times. Some games you will see teams kick easily 40 times. So six is crazy low, but it speaks to how they love to run the ball. Knock-ons finishes 16-6 to the Drua. Like I mentioned, the hands were, were the killer, but they get more possession. The Drua just less territory, 69-31 the territory. Maybe that's partly that kicking game from the Rebels able to control things. Um, the Rebels tackling percentage is still pretty low, man, 79. But I do understand sometimes the Drua guys they got some pretty big and fast ball carriers, so they're pretty hard to bring down, but still, they need to get those numbers higher. They make 168 tackles to the Drua's 92. 
but the Drew attack are eighty seven percent, which is pretty solid. So yeah, the Rebels will need to to defend at a higher rate than that going forward. But still, if you score forty two points, you're going to win most of your games. Um, Wilkin, man, fifty two run meters, two clean breaks, and seventeen from nineteen tackles. Not a bad shift from the Lucy. Habosi, the winger, he is dangerous. Ninety one run meters and ten defenders beaten. Yeah, they love that wide ball, man. So the stereotype sometimes rings true. But yeah, like I said, good win for the Rebels. 42 points. They are 1-5. and five. The Drew are also 1-5. and five. I think the Rebels got a buy this week. Them and the Force are off for a week. And uh, the Waratahs await the Drew. Uh, it's a home game for the Drew, but remember, not in Fiji. So yeah, we will see how they go. The last one, I re... Well, not rewatched that. I watched it delayed without knowing the result this morning. The Force and the Brumbies... I said before this one, I wouldn't mind a force win just to see if they can kind of compete with the Brumbies. And they got pretty close, admittedly with the Brumbies having a red card, which is not going to help matters because that's 20 minutes without one of your players and Tom Banks. But man, did it start well for the Brumbies. I mean, they were like 12-3 up after 10 minutes. Ryan Lonergan got one. Uh, Muir had got the first of his three within 10 minutes and the, the force had had three points on the board. So it was a pretty ordinary start from the force. You can't be conceding those kind of points. They kind of took the crowd out of it as well. Um, they got one through Tom Banks on 17 minutes. That one was a proper coast to coast try, turnover ball. And to be fair, um, the first minute one was turnover ball as well. The Brumbies on turnover ball are absolutely brutal. They're not just a mall team, man. Uh, they are able to do that heads up play. I mean... The try of the game was probably the Banks one. Because, I mean, Ekitao, he just, like, in his own 22, heads up, decides to take on the force defenders, gets the ball to Banks, and it's, I don't know, man, it's proper proper class stuff. So, yeah, they're, um, they're getting a nice wee lead out of the force. Not the force, the Brumbies. But then, uh, things kind of go to custard for them because Tom Banks gets a head-on-head -head red card for his tackle on Tony Pulu as he's going for the line. And I know the red on the red, on red. head on head is pretty much always going to be red these days unless there's some mitigating factors. Uh, like I know how that works and I am used to seeing these cards, but that one still felt a bit harsh. Like, I mean, um, Morgan Turunui uh did the um did the analysis i think because drew mitchell seemed pretty peed off but maybe he's not as familiar with seeing these kind of head-on-head -head cards um the fact that that's just the way it gets ruled these days like if you make contact with someone's head it doesn't matter really if it's your shoulder your arm or your own head it's going to put you in strife with the refs and um yeah but banks is one he was just kind of coming across from the side and was just kind of standing up as Pulu, I thought, changed direction back left? I don't know. I felt like that one maybe could have been mitigated to a yellow, but they went with red. So, yeah, I mean, Banks, I think, had to go to hospital. So, yeah, he wouldn't have stayed on the field anyway, but obviously he gets he gets red carded. That becomes a penalty try. And then uh, there's another try for the Force during that red card. They get one through uh, through Goblin. But then the Brumbies guys hit back during the red card through Muirhead. And then they get another one through Strawn. So it's a proper try fest. At the end of that first half, it's, it's pretty bonkers stuff. And then, uh, yeah, the second half, you got a try through Martelli. He gets an intercept. Um, they get one through Frost, that one's some good play. There's not really much going on after the uh, second Mataelia try. The game kind of just settles down a wee bit. Um, yeah, the Force do get a losing bonus point out of it because they manage to stay within a point. The Brumbies look like they might have been gonna, um, they might have been gonna score because they were kind of knocking on the door towards the end. But, um, yeah, the Force D managed to win a penalty, kicked it upfield. They lost that last line out, and that was the game. That was kind of a, a deflated way to let the game down because the game up until that point had been a proper a cracking one. But, yeah, obviously, got to give credit to Muirhead, man. Three tries. It's a hell of a shift. Um, Matayla gets a couple. Still looks really dangerous. So, yeah, it's a bit of a, um, it's a cracking game. 
just like, as I said, a bit deflating the way it ended. It would have been nice to see like the Force have a proper crack at it, but they just lost that last line out. Run meters finished 463 to 498, so it's pretty high. Um, the Brumbies edged the position, but the Force edged the territory. Turnovers conceded 14 to 9. That's an area of concern for the Force, because if they'd kept a bit more of their ball, but then again, their goal kicking was really good, whereas the Brumbies was not. If the Brumbies had kicked their goals... They would have been probably beyond touching distance. Mata Elia, two tries, a try assist, 117 run meters, three clean breaks, and two defenders beaten. Seven defenders beaten. Jeez. Bad handwriting. But that guy's just in phenomenal form. Muirhead, three tries, a try assist, 51 run meters, three clean breaks, six defenders beaten. Not a bad shift from him either. But yeah, man, three really, really entertaining games. As I said, the competition is certainly well boosted for having that kind of entertainment on show and it was even raining a bit in that force game as well which maybe explains a bit of the handling at times but i mean otherwise i thought it was a really good game the defenses maybe won't be that that satisfied with some of the tries they got lit in to be honest and if i was the force i'd be mainly gutted about the way they started uh if i was the brumbies i'd be pretty content with the way they bounced back as soon as they got back to 15 men and scoring a try during the red card as well so yeah, fingers crossed Tom Banks is all right uh, if he's gone off to hospital. But um, we will see because he's been in really good form after not ending the year that well last year. I think he's been on absolute fire this year. But anyway, I'll stop going on. We're 16 minutes in, better call it quits. But uh, yeah, you guys have any thoughts on the game? We look for games. We look forward to the, uh, the Blues Highlanders, the Crusaders, Chiefs, and the Reds and Waratahs today. Should be a pretty interesting round of games. But yeah, you guys, let me know your thoughts, and I'll talk to you again soon. See you later.